Hey guys, welcome to Pellets and Pits. Hey, today we did a jalapeno popper stuffed meatloaf wrapped in bacon, topped with barbecue sauce, smoked on the Traeger. If you guys want to see how we do this, shoo, here we go. Alrighty, jalapeno popper stuffed anything seems to be the craze. We did like a uh, smoked chicken bomb with jalapeno and cream cheese in it as well. Um, we've done burgers with it. It just sounds like a fantastic idea. So why not take the old traditional classic style meatloaf Jalapeno popper stuffed meatloaf. I'm all aboard. Bacon wrap, barbecue glaze, I think it's gonna be fantastic. We've been working on a recipe behind the scenes, so this is the first time we've actually debuted it. Typically, it's the other way around. I come up with a crazy idea, I try it here, and then we try to perfect the recipe. So anytime we have meatloaf, I'm on board. Some good pinto beans, some onions on the, I mean, some potatoes on the griddle. I'm a kid in the candy store. Here we go. List of ingredients. We got some cream cheese, of course. Uh, salt, black pepper, some paprika, some garlic, uh, an egg, some oats, some milk. I'm gonna mix some barbecue sauces together. They're some of my favorite. And of course, you got the jalapeno. I've already diced that for you. And then we're gonna make a bacon weave and wrap it in bacon. We're gonna put it on the Traeger, looking about 350 today. Uh, might keep it for like an hour to smoke it. We're gonna play around the temperature, see what happens. Let's make the meatloaf. Alrighty, to the mix. I'm just gonna throw in the milk. Crack one egg. Salt and pepper. Smoked paprika garlic powder, those oats, and your two pounds of ground beef. Now we're getting in there with our hands, mix this together. Kind of one of those things you don't want to over mix it just until it's incorporated. Something like that. Nice and incorporated. Doesn't take long at all. Alrighty, I'm just laying out some bacon right here. Roughly, I don't know, maybe seven pieces, something like that. We won't know until we get there. Just looking at width. Something like that. Fold up every other one. And we're gonna take this other bacon. Lay that bacon strip right there and then fold over. And then take the other piece of bacon right inside. And that's how you create a weave. And you just want to work our way out. So I'm looking about five pieces. So you want it to be pretty tight then? Yeah, I think this is probably one of the very few times I can say that the bacon truly matters. You probably want to upgrade and get a little bit better bacon than we did. <laughs> I didn't think about that. I just happened to find the bacon on sale. So live and learn. And then you just alternate. So since this one's right here, Once your bacon weave is done, it should look a little bit better than that. I've just got a sheet tray. It's like, it's considered a quarter sheet tray. I'm just gonna put it right there and that's what I'm looking at, right? So the whole thing gives you an idea of the circumference you need to press out your meat. So we're gonna move this off to the side, keep it in its shape, and then we're going to form the ground beef. Uh, flatten it out, but we're gonna roll it to the same width as this. Piece of aluminum foil. Giving that ground beef plenty of time to set up and absorb all those flavors. How thick do you want it to be? About an inch. You know, what's more important is, I don't think you want like your rounded edges, right? Cause you're going to fold it up like this. So you want this to be uniform as possible. So you just want to be able to take your time and do it right this way, then rush it and then have all your ingredients ooze out. So it's easy to tell that over here is a high spot, just working that meat around. And you should be just like decorating a cake. Find the high spots. <laughs> Once your rectangle is formed, just come back in with a little cream cheese. You want about an inch away from the edges. So just kind of pinch it. And then we can come back in here and spread it in a second. Alrighty, once you're done spreading your cream cheese, it should look something like this. Notice I kept the edges, 
come back in here, load it with some of those jalapenos. We had large jalapenos, so we did two. If you had, uh, you know, if you don't want a lot, you can obviously take some out. I didn't know how much it was going to take. It seemed like all the jalapenos are always different sizes. So just use your best guess. Just a little touch of garlic powder. And just on the inside, just a little touch of barbecue seasoning. We're using cue that. A lot of work, but we're on the downhill slide. So we left room on aluminum foil. You're just gonna raise it up and now you're gonna roll it tight, just like you would a sushi log. And you're just removing that foil as you come up. Then on the edges, notice how we left that gap. Just want to come in here and pinch that off a little bit. I know you can't see it. Hang on. Give me a second. All I'm doing is basically working it together and getting rid of that seam. Now, when your log's like this, you can adjust it. You can pat it in to get it fatter, or you can tap it out to get longer, okay? It really depends on your bacon weave. So there's the bacon weave. And if we've done everything correct, so it fits the bacon, and same philosophy. Take the paper, kind of work that bacon on the inside of it, Kind of reshape it because now you want it to cook even and there we go jalapeno popper bacon wrapped meatloaf oh that is looking good all right really quick i'm just showing the setup here sheet tray uh butcher paper aluminum foil and then i found one of these things i've had it way before youtube even started back in the old school days um i probably had it for 20 years so you can use a cooling rack if you want to um, I just found that when the logs like this, it just helps a little bit more support. So, you know, I've cooked it on both ways before, but I think it's fine if you do it like this, let that grease kind of escape. From there, just trying to be careful. Boy, this is an art, isn't it, honey? Adjusting your bacon pieces if you need to. Should we season it? Or just let it smoke just like that. I say just let it smoke because we're gonna right. put barbecue sauce on it. That's fair. For the boss. This is for you. I've had it hover at 190 just because I think it helps jump start, you know, getting the pellets ready. So I'm gonna go to 200 smoke mode. Using the Chef Tent Meat Probe, it's going right in the middle. And we're gonna smoke it for about an hour and come check on it. All righty, roughly 90 degrees. Let you guys look at it for a quick second. All right, now we're gonna adjust the temp up to maybe like 350. All right, I got a little KC Masterpiece. I'm looking like roughly like half a cup. I'm just trying to mirror the flavors of what this offers and what this one right here offers. I can have the link to his website listed below. I met him one time. I think he has fantastic barbecue sauce. This is a spicy, I'm out of the original. Hint, hint, he can send us some. <laughs> no, he's a good man. 
the kids just don't like the spice, so that's why I cut it a little bit. The good thing about that smoke mode, or keeping it low for that first hour, allows that bacon kind of to tack up a little bit. So when you add this sauce, you're not just adding it right to like raw bacon or raw ground beef. Let this keep going and maybe about 15 minutes before it's done, we're gonna barbecue sauce it again and then let it tack up for the final 15 minutes or so. All righty, we're hovering around 160 degrees. I'm just gonna double check it. Yeah, 165. It's interesting, this says 166, but my internal thermometer only says 160. So what I'm gonna do now is just basically tack it one more time with barbecue sauce. Go and shut this down. And while this is cooling down, there'll be plenty of residual heat to tack up this. Alrighty, we have let it rest. Slide that bad boy off. Just want to show you really quickly the underneath. This is why you do it like that. How that wax paper absorbs it. You can put aluminum foil on there or whatever. It just kind of keeps your sheet pan. All that bacon grease and the uh, beef grease, super easy to clean. So that's why I did it. Oh yeah. <sighs> Looking for some good thick slices. Why not? Ooh, that's a piece right there for me. Mm. Look at that right there. That is meat goodness. Mm. Alrighty, there she goes. She's a beauty. Absolutely looking fantastic. Jalapeno popper stuffed bacon wrapped meatloaf. Count me in. Look at that little smoke ring too. Oh yeah. Tender. That bite right there. Mm. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm what was that? Little, little hip action. Mhm. 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 Mm. Yeah, I think we nailed it. Mm. I think we nailed it. I think it really just comes down to changing the game. You know, like mm. there's some fantastic meatloafs out there. I'm not denying that. That at all. is a dang good meatloaf. Yeah. There are some fantastic meatloafs out there. Put them on the smoker, just ups the flavor. But this just gives you a different option, just something different, something to look forward to, something to enjoy, kind of like get out of the, the mundane, you know, just having it all the time the same way. And I think that's what cooking's mm, all about. The that, bacon, the barbecue sauce, the sweetness, the spiciness. The cream cheese in there. Mm -hmm. mm, golly, that, that is good. That is really good. I think even just the meatloaf without the cream cheese is just like a good consistency. I'll typically add something red to a meatloaf, uh, especially on the inside, a little bit more oomph of flavor, but I backed a lot of the, what I call the junk out because I wanted the cream cheese and the jalapeno to come through. You can make it your own or you can go to Pellets and Pits and check out this recipe because we have this one and plenty of other ones. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button, pound the notification button, share it with your friends. Peace. Mm is a winner, babe. Winner, winner, meatloaf dinner. <laughs>